The cheapest SMS service in the Gambia brought to you by the coolest network AfriCell. Text all day every day with your friends and loved ones to AfriCell network for only 40 budoots per SMS. The texting never stops. AfriCell always hook you up. Walk into any AfriCell outlet today to grab your own AfriPhone for $550 and receive 200 minutes of talk time spread over two months all for free. AfriCell got you. Talk till you drop. Enjoy free calls every morning between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 a.m. Pay for the first minute and the rest of your call is free. Nothing beats this. Let the conversation begin. With Afrizel, you're never out of credit even if you're out of cash. Borrow up to $250 is credit with the Afrizel Colary Credit. Send a blank SMS to 152 to activate the Colary Credit. Afrizel Colary Credit, the solution for you. Hello and welcome to the Strategy Newsroom. We are casting from our studios in Sarakunda. I am Maria Madem and many thanks for joining us. Coming up, UNICEF has released its 2022 annual situation report on women and children in the Gambia. The former CEO at the Basi Area Council testifies at the Commission of Inquiry. As the ongoing nationwide road clearing exercise intensifies, the Gambia Police Force and Partners on Wednesday returns three animals to owners. On international news, Sudan's army says it is planning to withdraw from ceasefire talks with the rapid support forces. Two more resolutions to end Gaza violence fell at the UN Security Council. This is my welcome station. Many thanks for joining us. Let's now take a look at the news in detail. The UNICEF office in the Gambia has recently released its 2022 annual situation report on children and women. This comprehensive report delves into various aspects such as good health and well-being, poverty, education and child protection, among others, offering a detailed analysis of the prevalent situations affecting children in the Gambia. More in this report. The 2022 report primarily concentrates on the present issues impacting children and women in the Gambia. It also highlights the progress made through collaborative efforts between UNICEF, the Government of the Gambia and other organizations aimed at providing support to women and children in need. Despite commendable advancements in child protection legislations and this, the report points out significant challenges that hinder the attainment of sustainable development goals 5, 8, 11 and 16, which among other things aims to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. More than 89.2% of children experience multiple forms of violence including sexual violence, bullying, physical aggression and caregivers and physical punishment. 25.7% of women between the age of 20 to 24 were married before the age of 18 years which represents 44% in the poorest households and 7.5% before the age of 15 years and that amounts to 12.9% among the poorest. 76% of women aged 15 to 49 years and 51% of girls 0 to 14 years have experienced FGM and 15% of children work in hazardous occupations mainly in rural Gambia with 39% while the urban stood at 17%. 9 out of 10 children according to the report in the Gambia are poor and deprived of one dimension of zero hunger which stands at 19%, wasting at 9% and underweight at 17%. The report also reveals limited access to servicing, well equipped quality and maternal newborn services. However, UNICEF in the Gambia has supported a wide range of governmental and civil society organizations to achieve key results for children while strengthening systems and coordination mechanisms across health, nutrition, education, was child protection and social protection. In the area of immunization, UNICEF backed the development of the COVID-19 vaccination strategy and budget resulting in improved coordination, micro planning and identification of priority target groups, the report added. With all these challenges facing children and women in the Gambia, the national health budget is still below the regional 15% minimum target. Therefore, makes progress on children's rights require coordinated and multi-dimensions approaches to support the most vulnerable children. Maria Madem, reporting for Stati News. Now moving on, on Thursday, the former Chief Executive Officer of the Basse Area Council provided further testimony at the ongoing Local Government Commission of Inquiry. 
During his testimony, he focused on the partnership between his council and a company called 5C, co-founded by the former chairperson of the Burkama Area Council, Mr. Serifo Sanko. Our Sane has been following the proceedings and she prepared this report. After hearing from all the genius under him, Mr. Usman Toure, ex-CEO of the Basse Area Council, said the company was introduced to his council by one of their colleagues, Fode Danjo, and the then chairman of the Brikama Area Council in 2019, persisting that the Basse Area Council was invited in a meeting with founders of the 5C company in November 2019 to share ideas and work on projects with the aim of developing the various councils, adding that that the project was finalized in January 2020. This is what the witness has to say when lead counsel Yakar Cox asks him if they did any background checks about the company before signing the partnership with them. Yeah, that time we, we don't have any uh, lawyer for the council or any uh, legal advisor for the council. We depend entirely on their, uh, their own company's legal advisor. But notwithstanding, I also wrote a letter of expressing, expression of interest to the ministry, uh, our line ministry, for their advice. When was that? Uh, this was also in January. In January? January 2020. 2020. Yes. When you signed the agreement? No, before we signed the agreement. Okay. When the agreement comes, we'll check the dates. Okay. So you didn't conduct any background check. You didn't check with the registry whether they were a registered company no, when we, they were registered. No, no we, we, we didn't check that, but we asked them that whether they are registered. They, Did they, you ask them to provide proof that they were registered? Uh, Mr. Toure further shared some of the discussions he had with the former chairperson of the Brickham Area Council, which focused on the company before designing. That is uh, how you know they started it, and what are the benefits that they are you know when they are doing uh, this uh, when they are partnered with uh, 5C. What are some of the uh, benefits the council will get, and what is uh, uh, about the efficiency and the effectiveness of the of the of the of the service? We discuss about that, Did and you? based on that, that was why we were encouraged and correct to uh, get into the business. Did you go to Brickham Area Council to check how the stem worked? Yeah, we went there. We had a meeting there. When? Uh, I could not remember, but I have an email inviting us for that meeting. I have sent all the emails to the investigators that are Was the correspondents. in 2019 or 2020, 2021? This, this will be in 2020. In 2020? Yes. After the signature of the agreement? No, before the signature. Moreover, he discloses that the devices that were presented to his council by their partners were old based on the unqualitiness of the batteries and how bad the printing system was working. Sittings continue. For Star TV News, I am Awasane. That was Awasane reporting there. Now, as part of the ongoing nationwide road clearing operation, the Gambia Police Force and the National Livestock Owners Association on Wednesday conducted a ceremony at the Abuko Abattoir to return stray animals to their respective owners. These collaborative efforts aim to ensure the safe and rightful reunification of these animals with their owners. Model Baji has the details. It could be recalled that the Gambia Police Force and stakeholders are currently on an operation aimed at clearing the country's major highway by removing illegal structures and stray animals from the roadsides. However, since the commencement of the operation, the authorities have intercepted over 28 cattle that were found loitering on the main public road. Here is the Deputy Police PRO, Assistant Superintendent Momodu Musa Sisao, dilating on the captured stray animals. Public roads. And basically, we are aware most of these animals are on the road from Airport Junction going to Costa Road, then also going to um, Brusubi, uh, Senegambia. Uh, but not only that, but any other road upon which we have these stray animals. Um, not only the cattle, I am sure currently we are only seeing cattle here, but any animal that may be on our road would be removed by the tax force, this component of the tax force. So um, these animals, when they are actually removed, they will be taken, they will be brought here 
at Abuko, at Abuko where they will be stationed and at Abuko um, the, the president will actually go into detail as to what happened in Abuko and the plans uh, the plans are that at Abuko at the end of the day uh, individual owners whosoever uh, claim to own any any animal would come to Abuko and and and, and, and take ownership of those those animals. So basically, uh, this is what we are here, and we want the general public to understand that we are doing everything possible in our capacity as far as the tax force is concerned to ensure that all stray animals, cattle to be specific, are uh, off our main road. The president of the National Livestock Owners Association, Ibrahima Ojalo, said most of the animals were captured around the coastal road and President Jalo underscored the role of his association in the ongoing road clearing operation. For a period of two weeks, and if you don't see the owner, actually the state will, 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 will end up selling their profit and the state. But now, thank God, most of the animals, actually, their owners have started coming out. Uh, if you look around, uh, you can see uh, some farmers that are around. Uh, they are the people that own these animals. And then now we're going to work with them to see that how best are we going to hand them over. Handing over is not a problem, but now uh, the handing over have to go with warning. Uh, Mr. Piero, that uh, we don't want to see these animals no more. Though they have challenges of keeping the animal, they have challenges of having peace where they can actually allow these animals. And the places that they were having are all now being encroached or development have came. But that is development. When development is coming, actually we have to appreciate certain things to happen. But now that these animals, uh, actually we are not saying we cannot keep animals around here, but we cannot allow animals roaming or sometimes lying on the road. And this is uh, why we are also participating as a national body to make sure that we clear because managing this animal, catching these animals, uh, taking care of this animal is not easy. These are wild animals. Uh, some of them been, uh, have never been caught or they have never been uh, 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 managed. They have been just moving around every day in and out as stray animals. And now to apprehend those animals and bring them here is not easy. The Livestock Association president advised farmers to manage their animals to avoid being intercepted by the authorities. He also called on the government to develop grazing environments for animals. To make sure we understand what is what. But again, I will use this opportunity to call on the government of the Gambia, especially the Minister of Agriculture, local government, to try to identify so that we can have very good land policies, so that we can be able to have a grazing land. Because any country go within the sub-region, especially in the Equus sub-region, you see this animal grazing land. But in the Gambia, actually, we have cattle trusts, but we don't have enough grazing land. So when we don't have rainland and grazing land, actually, meaning what is happening in the greater Banjo here, it's also going to happen in the other region. And then if you go to other regions like URR, LRR, and other regions, we still have more peace. This is where now government have to come to identify lands that are purely for livestock development, that are purely for other development that will actually happen. But if not, we will move these farmers from this region, they go to another region, they will not be fitting there, and they will end up migrating or they will end up leaving this country to another country with their animals. And I think now government need to do a very good study under that, make sure we sit down, we have very good policy, not only to make policy, but when we are doing policies, those policies have to go with guide, those policies have to go also with responsibility. And the responsibility of livestock production is we need land. Agriculture in general, we need land. So we know there is no land here, but what can we do in the other part of the Gambia so that they are purely land that are designated for livestock development and now even farmers move from the greater Banjul area you can able to assign them move to point a or move to point b but now that these animals are here meaning there is no place that we can take them as a farm organization there is no place the owners can go and graze and there is no place that government can identify and we don't want this to replicate in other region and i think i'll use this opportunity to make sure that this thing go however there are strangers attached to the return of these animals and authorities are also working to include a cash payment before one could regain his or her animal for star tv i am model baji now from the story by model baji we will take a short commercial break and when we return the news continues stay tuned thank you now nah. manga them why them what to be tangela buga them face mo jeni kongi mo jelo mbeligi feye gu moko feye kongre tanda dem batangi ah smoke ki feye wunu madev dupa am jendi te afri moni ne li afri moni ah yo dal gal bi dem na baye mune afri moni ne kati nad nyo no kwal nyun yep man mangi ni borom gal ni suma len na refe ci afri moni la len di paye borom pousse pousse ci afri moni te feyuma ci dara 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 ñu ngi bari le ejen numa def be bokka ci dimbale man la def sta seven 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 has ci mako munta bi na numa def ci rew mi fo dem fekka fa sen agency ken bi yomba na ci gon son bi dawal gaaw afri moni re ñun ñep len fi nekkal way yonne xaliss ci bir rewi gambie ak gawti ur ak afri moni mu nga yonne ku la neex ci taxaway te dikey wala dara dayalal star 777 hash ngi yonne wala waxu ci afri moni egin bu la gëna jégué wala afri sen customer care wala nga call 777 ñu léralal la lepp lo soxla 
Welcome back after the set commercial break. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the study in the newsroom. And we're broadcasting from us today in Sarakunda. Hi, Maria Madam, and thanks for joining us. Let's now see our attention to some international news. Sudanese army says it is planning to withdraw from ceasefire talks with the paramilitary rapid support forces before they begin. More than one million Sudanese have fled since the fighting began in mid-April to neighboring countries. About 420,000 have sought refuge in neighboring Chad. At Zero, Heba Morgan has the latest. Well, let's speak to our correspondent, Heba Morgan. She joins us now from the Sudanese capital, Khartoum. Heba, there was the hope that this was a moment that everyone would come back to the negotiating table. What's happened? Well, for the past two days, the paramilitary rapid support forces has been attacking a military base in this uh, western part of the country, specifically, specifically in South Darfur, in the city of Niala. Now, that's the second largest city in Sudan after Khartoum. And it's also where the army has one of its largest military bases. And that base fell under the control of the paramilitary rapid support forces in the early hours of Thursday morning. And that's the reason why the army, uh, as per sources, is uh, in intending to withdraw from the talks, uh, well, indirect talks at that, uh, with the rapid support forces in the Saudi city of Jeddah. Now, uh, it's worth noting that just hours before the talks were due to start, the army did release a statement saying that the reason why they're resuming talks uh, after the invitation from Saudi Arabia and the other mediator, the United States, is because it wants to alleviate and to ease the humanitarian suffering that has been, uh, that's the result of the conflict, but that it will continue to fight uh, the paramilitary rapid support forces. So uh, the loss of Niala, uh, the military base in Niala, the, the second largest uh, city in, in, in Sudan and one of the largest military bases is the reason why those talks that is supposed to be happening in the Saudi city of Jeddah may not happen uh, and suffering of Sudanese, whether it's here in the capital, Khartoum, or Niela will continue. Uh, Hiba, what's the situation like on the ground there at the moment? Does the RSF still hold all that territory in Khartoum? The RSF is spread uh, around many parts of the capital, Khartoum, especially in the southern and the eastern parts of the capital. Now, the army is in control of parts of Umdurman, especially the northern part of the city of Umdurman in the capital, Khartoum. But both sides have been trying to uh, get a decisive win over the other in the capital, Khartoum. The loss of Niala in South Darfur has given the RSF an upper hand, but I, I, it's not clear yet if it will have any impact in terms of the overall uh, uh, scene uh, and uh, structures of the conflict here in the capital Khartoum and elsewhere around the country. The RSF says that it is in control of many parts of the capital, but there is a lot of army presence in many parts of the uh, of the city of Umdurman in Khartoum and in uh, other parts as well. So no side has a decisive upper hand in the capital Khartoum for them to claim that they are the victors in this conflict that is going on for more than six months now. Hiba Morgan there with the latest for us from the Sudanese capital. Thank you, Hiba. Now, the United Nations Security Council has again failed to take action on the Israel-Hamas conflict despite a deepening humanitarian crisis in the Palestinian enclave of Gaza. Russia and China on Wednesday vetoed a United States resolution that called for humanitarian pause to allow humanitarian aid access, the protection of civilians and a stop to arming Hamas and other armed groups in the Gaza Strait. A rival text put forward by Moscow then failed to draw sufficient support. The U.S. had toned down an initial draft release over the weekend after diplomats expressed shock at its failure to re recognize the humanitarian crisis and its bold statement that Israel had a right to defend itself. Ten members voted for the resolution, while the United Arab Emirates voted no, and Brazil and Mozambique abstained. It was a rare move by the U.S. to suggest security council action, but diplomats noted that a humanitarian pause was not the same as a ceasefire, which has been backed by the United, United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. A pause might last only a matter of hours, as said as Christian Salome reports from the United Nations headquarters in New York. Draft resolution has not been adopted. This was a third attempt to get aid into Gaza. Abstentions. And this was the fourth. The draft resolution has not 
being ad- adopted. Russia, China, and the United Arab Emirates voted against a resolution drafted by the United States meant to present a unified position on Israel's war with Gaza. The final product doesn't reach in any way the most basic standards of quality. It still does not contain a call for a ceasefire. It has no condemnation of arbitrary attacks on civilians and civilian objects in Gaza. And there's no denial of the actions of forced movements of civilians. The United States and the United Kingdom voted against Russia's draft. The United States could not support yet another Russian resolution that was put forward with no consultation, that failed to reflect the realities on the ground. It is disappointing that Russia would rather try and score political points and further divide this council than address the current urgent needs of Israelis and Palestinians. The Russian draft, echoing the UN Secretary General, humanitarian organizations, and the Arab League, called for an immediate ceasefire. The US draft for humanitarian pauses, with neither of them succeeding, The elected members of the Security Council are vowing to try yet again with their own version. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, the United Nations. Now Italians have been gathering in their thousands in the capital of Santiago to raise money for Palestinians on the siege in Gaza. Al Jazeera's Latin America editor, Lucia Newman, has more. What you see here is part of the largest Palestinian community outside of the Middle East. This is Chile, and here there are thousands of people gathered, people with and without Palestinian roots, to show their solidarity with the people of Gaza, particularly, and the occupied West Bank. They are also calling for independence, for a ceasefire, and for peace in that part of the world. Violence can't be justified for any end or by anyone. But in this case, it's important to support our people. I may not have been born in Palestine, but my roots are there. This is at least the third such demonstration of solidarity in Chile, where the Palestinian community is very influential. But it's not just Palestinians or descendants of Palestinians who are here. We have Lebanese relatives, and my heart is with the Palestinians. I think it's fair to say that the Chilean population in general is horrified at what is happening in Gaza and also at what happened to Israelis after Hamas attacked a few weeks ago. The generations that will survive this will grow up with hatred. This massacre has to end. It has to end. The artists here are donating their time for this fundraiser and the proceeds of all this will go to help the hospitals, or what's left of them, in Gaza and in the occupied territories. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Santiago, Chile. Now the story brings us to the end of this news bulletin. But before we take a leave of you, a quick reminder of our main headlines. UNICEF has released its 2022 annual situation report on women and children in the Gambia. The former CEO at the Basi Area Council testifies at the Commission of Enquiry. As the ongoing nationwide road clearing exercise intensifies, the Gambia Police Force and Partners on Wednesday return stray animal store owners on international news. Sudan's army says it is planning to withdraw from ceasefire talks with the Rapid Support Forces. Two more resolutions to end Gaza violence fell at the UN Security Council. That's all we have for you in this edition of the news. Do join us tomorrow for another bulletin. But in the meantime, do enjoy the rest of our programs and have a wonderful night. Thanks for watching.